What's happening, Expeditioners? It's Pete here, founder of Expedition Money. I want to just read to you another chapter from my book here, Amazing Money Stories, True Tales of Greed, Generosity, Success, and Luck. These are just very short stories about people with some aspect of money that I hope are, one, interesting or fascinating or head-scratching, but also kind of give you some little nugget of wisdom that you might be able to apply to your financial life. This is chapter number four, called Some Serious Dough. In the early days of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin was little more than a curiosity. Most people dismissed the idea of a virtual currency, seeing it as nothing more than a quirky experiment among tech enthusiasts. Back then, Bitcoin's value was so low that tech-savvy folks were mining the currency with their computers, earning Bitcoins for free. No merchants accepted Bitcoin as a payment, and digital coins seemed to have no real-world value. But on May 22, 2010, a programmer named Laszlo Hyens had a craving that would change everything. He looked at his digital wallet, stuffed with Bitcoins, and wondered if he could trade them for something tangible. Something like pizza. Hyens posted a simple request on a Bitcoin forum. I'll pay 10,000 Bitcoins for a couple of pizzas. Maybe two large ones so that I'll have some left over for the next day. At the time, those 10,000 Bitcoins were worth just a few bucks. Enter Jeremy Sturdivant, another programmer who went by the online handle Jerkos. Sturdivant saw Hyens's post and took him up on the offer. He ordered two pizzas from Papa John's, had them delivered to Hyens's door, and in exchange received 10,000 Bitcoins. Little did they know that this casual transaction would go down in history as the first real-world purchase made with Bitcoin. It was a pivotal moment in the evolution of cryptocurrencies, a proof of concept that digital coins could have real value. Over the years, Bitcoin's value had been on a wild ride, soaring to dizzying heights that turned those initial 10,000 coins into a legitimate fortune. In March 2024, at the peak of Bitcoin's value, the coins that bought those two pizzas would have been worth a staggering $738 million. The pizzas that cost a few dollars in 2010 would eventually be considered the most expensive in history. For the price of two large pies, you could buy a private island, a fleet of luxury cars, or a lifetime supply of pepperoni. You gotta have a long life to have a lifetime supply of three quarters of a billion dollars of pepperoni. But Hyans and Sturdivant weren't thinking about any of that when they made their deal. They were just two guys, one hungry for pizza and the other betting on the potential of a new technology. Little did they know that their transaction would become a legend a story told and retold as a testament to the power of innovation and the unpredictable nature of the digital age. Now, I bring the story up here not to convince you to get into Bitcoin. Bitcoin is very expensive, but in full disclosure, I have some Bitcoin. I have a handful of various cryptocurrencies. I couldn't even list them all off to you because I don't even know what some of them are. Some of them I buy on just a whim. But one of the things that I have learned about cryptocurrency over the years is that just because sometimes I'm confused about something or just because I can't see the future doesn't make me right, right? Someone who doesn't see what the potential is when other people see it. When Bitcoin was first pitched to me, it was a friend of mine and he pitched it a couple times and I didn't even hear the term distributed ledger. The technology of it wasn't even being pitched as something that was novel or interesting. In fact, it was just the idea of buying this cryptocurrency, this kind of digital online currency. And, you know, potentially maybe I could pay someone online faster than I could if I were converting money, especially if I were paying someone in a different country or something like that, where you would have the exchange rates between the different currencies. And the first time he pitched it, he's like, Pete, there's this thing called Bitcoin. And I was like, oh, tell me about it. And it was $2 a coin because I wasn't really someone that would get into mining. I never have gotten into mining. In fact, I've only been recently thinking about buying a mining rig for some other coins. But at the time, I was thinking $2 a coin, and I think part of my mind was just set on the fact that a Bitcoin would be a dollar. And paying $2 for a Bitcoin was like paying $2 for a dollar. That didn't make any sense. It didn't even kind of enter my mind that Bitcoin and the idea of a single coin was just the accounting measure. I think the idea of a coin Kind of confuses us in some ways, right? And so he was like, I think you should pick up some, man. Just throw $20 at it. Throw 100 bucks at it. I was like, I don't think so. It just felt like a waste of money to me. And Bitcoin was moving around quite a bit. So the fact that I might have bought it at $2, it could have easily been $0.10 cents the next day the way it was moving around. And then we met again. We were doing some other financial planning types of stuff. And he was like, you know, hey, did you buy any Bitcoin? I think you should buy some. It's like $120.00 a coin at the moment. I was like, oh my gosh, I went from two to 120. This thing has taken off. And I thought about it. And I was like, well, now I'm not going to get into it. All the money has been made in it. <laughs> the run-up is done. And so at that time I was even less inclined, even though it had 
obviously more momentum at that point, but I just thought, well, this is dumb. A coin is 120 bucks. And then again, when we met, it was around 200 and he was kind of pitching me on that. And I didn't make a move until much later on Bitcoin. And I wish I had, because even throwing a hundred dollars or $200 at it, buying one or two coins, right? Obviously with Bitcoin being 50, 60, $70,000 at any given day, having one or two coins would be 70 to $140,000. That's pretty amazing for a hundred or $200 investment. Now I say investment in quotes because I think Bitcoin and all the other cryptocurrencies are still speculative. There's nothing backing it like there is with a stock, a stake in the ownership of a company. That being said, there are lots of things that we invest in or speculate on that don't have any intrinsic value behind them, including the US dollar or betting on a horse race or anything else that you're not going to walk away with anything. So while I keep hearing that you don't really own anything behind the cryptocurrency, well, that's not really a great argument. There are many things that are good investments that don't really have anything physically backing them up anymore. And just because something is physically backed up doesn't mean that it has a market for it. If you were alive in 2008, 9, and 10, you know that mortgage-backed securities weren't getting, weren't commanding a lot of money, even though there were properties and real estate and land behind those too. So just wanted to bring that up. Kind of my journey with Bitcoin. I wish I had gotten in a lot earlier, but for some of the people that did, uh, they can be sitting on a lot of Bitcoin. I have many more stories about uh, coming across and meeting people in the Bitcoin community and some staggering amounts of money that some people have. So if you want to read that story or many more stories, you can definitely pick up a copy of this Amazing Money Stories. I'll put a link to it in the description. I'll see you later.